Welcome to another episode of Cobweb Garage. Now this episode was supposed to be all about the test drive. Unfortunately, I've had not one, not two, but three engine issues. So let's see what's been going on. The few times I've started this scoot up, I've been getting some oily petrol coming from around here. And also you can see here on the exhaust there, initially I thought it might be coming from the spark plug, but I've taken it out and I cleaned around it and it's absolutely immaculate now. So I don't think any oil is coming out of there. So the only thing, possibly the exhaust, but that doesn't look too bad either, too oily. So I think it must be the head or head gasket. So unfortunately, I'm gonna to have to pull this cowling off, which involves taking the exhaust off, taking the shock absorber off, a few bolts and then the cowling will come off. Hopefully I'll get, get a better idea of what it is. What a pain. So this is the engine cow. It's obvious where the oil, well the area the oil is coming from. It's around near the spark plug. However, when you look at the spark plug hole, I did clean it up yesterday before the test drive and it's pretty darn clean. So I don't think it is coming out of the spark plug hole, but just moving back a bit and where the head meets the barrel, that is definitely oily. So I think that is the issue and I'm gonna pull the head off. Got the shock off, rear shock. The head is off and a couple of things you notice you can see actually exactly where the the problem is coming out that's the right way up and basically it was shooting out the top which was near the spark plug hole which was confusing me but the other thing you notice is there is no gasket there I've been in contact with my friend Neil at Bristol Lambretta Club. He's been sort of giving me some advice as we go along with this and he's just texted me to say he might have a gasket. So there's a chance we can get this back together again tonight. Come on Neil, you're a good man. So I've nipped over to Neil's place and I've picked up the gasket. Also a bit of gasket sealant which he recommends to smear a little bit of on there, on both sides. Uh, and also he gave me some solder and that is to do what they call a squish test and just to find out the gap between the top of the piston and the bottom of the head. So I will be doing that in a second, but first of all, I'm gonna give this head a clean up. Uh, I think I'm gonna use a bit of wire wool and then um, a bit of wet and dry paper get it nice and smooth. Got this head cleaned up pretty nicely with just some fine wire wool and a bit of WD-40 for lubricant. That come out pretty good. But now I'm just gonna try and make sure the surface is completely flat. So basically I have got a piece of fine wet and dry paper there taped to my perfectly flat desk here, worktop. And I'm just gonna do this in a figure of eight, which is as Sticky suggests in his uh, Lambretta book. Use a bit of WD-40 again, and just see if we can uh, get that nice and smooth. Well, I've been working on this head for a little while and hopefully you can pick this up on camera, but it's cleaning up beautifully. And the only slight area now is this top bit, which is exactly where the oily fuel was coming. So that's obviously a low spot there. 
so I'm just going to keep going with this hopefully we'll get down to that low spot now that has come up beautifully hopefully you can see that that looks pretty good that has been a good probably 45 minutes of just working away at that but super happy that's come out super flat now next we're going to try and do what they call a squish test and that is basically to see how much gap there is from the top of the piston to the bottom of the head now the way to do it apparently is use a thick piece of solder and you push that down into the spark plug run the engine over once and that will squish that use your vernier gauge to see how thick it is now at the moment the solder is 1.9 it's probably a two two mil yeah sorry two mil so it's a two mil piece of solder there it is going in through the spark plug hole and i've never done this before so anyway that's obviously hit the back i'm just gonna Turn this engine over once. I've got my squished bit of solder here and my vernier gauge and it's given me between sort of 1.3 and 1.4 mil of squish. But, I don't know if you can see that, hold on. Yeah, 1.35 maybe. But that squish is with no gasket. So the recommended squish is between 1 mil and 1.5 mil. And I've got like 1.35, 1.4 with no gasket. So any gasket I put in there is just going to push me over the top of what I should have and looking online there's a lot of people that run these engines without a gasket at all basically the theory behind it is that when these were built the engineering process wasn't that precise so the gasket would take out any sort of intolerances with the head and the barrel but if you can get that engineering right and hopefully what I did with the emery paper or the wet and dry paper on a flat surface hopefully i've got that head completely flat now and and got rid of any imperfections in the head so i'm gonna try and reassemble all this with no gasket just with some sealant that i've got and neil gave me this sealant i hope you can uh, see that which is sp supposed to be best one however again online some people like this some people don't but this is what I've got so I'm going to smear a bit of this sealant I think it's actually a um, like a compound rather than a sealant but anyway I'm going to smear that on there reassemble the engine and just hopefully that's stopped any issues and it'll be right if it's not then I'll get hold of I think you can get a 0.3 gasket so I'll, I'll try and get hold of one of those which will push me over the top that will push you up to about 1.65 1.7 so a little bit more than the 1.5 that's recommended anyway for now I'm going to put it back together and I just want to get it at least going for this weekend to give it a test drive
And it's back together again. Well, just the spark plug to fit actually, but I am gonna just leave it for a little while because I've put some, I don't know if you can see there, but I've put some exhaust sealant around there because a little bit was coming out around that manifold. I think that's normal with those exhausts. They're kind of held onto the manifold with a couple of springs and they tend to leak around the manifold. So I'm gonna go in, I think, have a cup of tea and try and give it a start in a couple of hours time. We have good news and we have bad news. The good news is my leaky head seems to be okay now. I think I fixed it. I'm quite pleased with that bit of machining I did there. Well, rubbing it on some sandpaper anyway, but there's no more leaks from the head. I took it for a test drive yesterday, again, just around the block near my house. And this engine is whooping my ass because, yeah, it's in bits again. I'm not sure exactly what the issue is, but what I do know is this clutch is toast. Absolute state. So I, I'm thinking I'm more, I'm hoping it's clutch related, the problem. Basically, I kind of just lost drive to the to the wheel if you like and the kickstart would work sometimes not other times as in turning the engine over I don't know there may be something more serious but pulling this chain case off the side case off and looking at this clutch this clutch is definitely at it I mean those clutch pads are black gnarly it's it's bit gritty it's just horrible one other issue i noticed as well is that the kickstart arm on the inside there has been rubbing on the outer clutch plate apparently a lot of people grind this back a little bit so i'm going to give that a go i think it looks like it has been ground a bit already but i'm just going to grind that off a little bit more and we're going to throw a new clutch in. My friend Neil is on his way over tonight. And in preparation, I'm just going to give these clutch plates a good clean up because I think he's only bringing over the cork clutch plates. So, so just been investigating where this kickstart shaft has been rubbing on the clutch outer plate. And basically, I don't have any engineer's ink, but I just used a bit of red emulsion paint put onto this outer plate and put the crankcase back on and you can see exactly now where it's been rubbing so i don't need to grind i don't know who ground all this bit away previously but that obviously isn't really, well it's not an issue anymore anyway so i'm just going to grind a bit more there where that paint is so that's it and don't worry that's just emulsion paint that's just going to wipe off with a bit of tissue just trying to minimize any debris going into the engine case so i've just put some plastic around there taped it and that is the area i'm going to grind off a little bit I'm not sure if uh, you all saw my short video where I rebuilt the carburetor on the scoot. Well, it worked perfectly for a little while and then it just started peeing out petrol again. So I just kind of had enough. The other issue I had with the original carburetor as well is trying to find an air filter which would fit on it and still allow the flip loop to come up. The issue is when I lift the loop up, if you can see that carburetor in there, but basically the air filter hits with the side panel. So I've bitten the bullet 
and I've splashed out a little bit and brought a brand new Delorto carb. So with the original carburetor, I have been told that they just don't work well without a proper air filter on. Obviously the Delortos, you know, everyone runs them without an air filter. So I can do that or put a simple gauze on anyway, which will then allow my flip loop to uh, work correctly. Also should give me some better performance and all the rest of it. To get access to remove this carburetor manifold, because a new carburetor does come with a new manifold, uh, you have to undo three bolts which hold the cowl in on there. Uh, the spark plug that allows the cowl in to move forward to gain access to take the nuts off. And then I had to take the shock absorber off just to let the frame sit down. It just gives you enough just about enough room to pull this out from there. Anyway, that's got the old one off. I'm just going to take this old gasket off because I've got a new gasket obviously and we'll have a look from there. The old gasket came off pretty well, pretty much in one piece. There are a couple of little bits left on the engine case but I got a scraper in there and clean it up. A bit of tissue in there just to stop any debris going down in the engine. And now it's time to try and fit the new manifold. This is interesting just to compare the two manifolds. That's the old one. And you can kind of see how much bigger the new one is. New gasket in place. I just had to shave a tiny bit off the gasket because it just was overlapping slightly, sticking out slightly. So I just got a razor blade and just sliced it. New carburetor manifold on. Nuts snugged up. The new carburetor all fitted. It's got this uh, 180 bend. New Delorto carburetor is fitted and it does seem to run kind of okay-ish. I think it needs a bit of setting up. The jets need maybe changing. But anyway, uh, I'm gonna take it for a test drive very soon. Now I just wanted to go through all the bits and pieces I've been doing just to uh, get the thing roadworthy and make my life a bit easier. Uh, when it's out and about. I've adjusted the front brake, although I've got a feeling that still needs a bit of attention. I have fitted these lovely rubbers to the footboards here. That's good. I've gone through and I've put some grommets, or if I can't get the grommets in, I've put some tape around there just to stop anything uh, cutting through. Should be fine though, not worried about that. Uh, I'll whip the panels off and I'll show you under here what I've been doing. I have fitted a little tab here to make the petrol on and off nice and easy to use. And on this side, I have tidied up the electrics a little bit. Uh, and I have fitted a tailpipe to the exhaust, basically because I didn't like where the old tailpipe finished and it was just pumping exhaust smoke right in the middle of the scooter. So. I don't know if you can see, but the side stand, I've extended that. I don't know if you noticed in previous episodes, I was using a block of wood. I mean, all I've done here, I just cut it, sleeved it with a slightly bigger bar, and welded it up. Does the job, fits there nicely. But there's one last job that I've been really looking forward to doing, and the last job before I can take this for a test drive, and that is fit the number plate. So excited to be doing this. It feels like the build is complete when this goes on. so much for watching this episode of Cobweb Garage. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Find us on Facebook and Instagram. If you want to support the channel, we do have these lovely t-shirts available. The link is below. We do ship those all over the world and they're just 10 quid plus the shipping in uh, fitted and regular versions. And yeah, next time it'll either be a test drive or possibly a dyno, but tune in again. See you soon, thank you.